What is going on? In today's video, we are going to build a market maker that trades algorithmically 24-7, 365, and it doesn't matter if price goes up or down, the goal is to make money going both ways. I'll explain it to you on my Twitter. So essentially, like I said, we're gonna build a market maker and it's gonna be an algorithm that looks at BTC prices 24-7, 365. It doesn't matter if the price is going up, we win. Price goes down, we win. And if the price goes sideways, we also win. This is why we really like market makers. I've built a few of these in the past, so I'll be able to fly through this. It still might be a little bit longer, so if you wanna tap that like button to save this video or subscribe, please do so. I will show you all the code here in this process. And yeah, you can see one of my bots here running below. Finally, we see some losing positions because I swear my last like five videos, it's just been unrealistically good. Thank God we finally show some losing position so you don't just go out there and run my bots immediately right I teach this stuff so you can learn how to build bots and then put in your own strategies but anyways enough about that let's dive into what we need to build here today let's go ahead and you can see I have some inputs but I actually don't need that one size I'm just gonna use a small size for testing let's do three sleep I don't need it symbol UBTC you can see that we're connected to Femex here with the ccxt.femex. Pretty easy to do. You simply just put in this don't share config and all that good stuff, just like that. And then some other things we need to bring in here. We wanna have a percentage from low to high, and we're gonna put that at 0.35. I'll dive into that later. The close seconds, I'll also dive into this later, but we're gonna do 60 times 47. And position size, we already have size of three, which is good. Max low to high. So this is just parameter I'm putting in in order to make sure we don't trade in times that are not good. Time frame equals, we'll do one minute for now. We might change that to five. Let's say number of bars equals 180. By the way, if I'm going super fast for you, I'm sorry, but there's a lot of code here to do today. So I just want to dive in. Max risk. 1000 stop loss percentage equals 0 0.1 exit percentage. But what I was saying is I put all of the code in the bootcamp. There's a link for that below. Max TR equals 550 quartile. And I know I'm not explaining much of this right now, but we will. Price time limit equals 60 and sleep equals 30. Okay, so these are the things that we need to put in. Like I said, I've built something like this in the past, so this is what I do every single day. I build new versions of algorithms that are doing well for me because I want them to do better, right? And that's why I love this game. It's like a video game. Essentially, every day, like for example, if you're playing FIFA or Madden or Call of Duty, every time you log on, you want to do better, right? You learn that people tend to hide behind this wall. Well, okay, now I know that's a, a good spot, so I'm gonna go find them at that wall. Right, so same thing with algo trading. I'm a big time gamer, so this is like my adult game. And you know, as long as you don't use too much money, it can be treated like that. And then once it actually works for you, then you can scale it up. So the first thing we wanna do is bring in a kill switch. Now, let's go ahead here. I have a kill switch here, so I actually don't need to bring it in because I have this kill switch in this nice funks file. So let's go back to market maker and let's say, should I bring it in? Let's do that. I'm gonna bring in the size kill and the kill switch. So these two functions are pretty useful. I'll explain them really quickly. You can see I need open positions still. We need to grab our open positions. Looks like I passed that one, but hey, we'll jump back to that in a second. But essentially this gets us out of a position when we need it to get out of position. So if we hit our max loss or our stop loss, we will get out of the position. So that's a kill switch. This is a size kill. This is like, hey, our position's too big for some reason. And that's just like a risk parameter, right? So for risk, if size ever gets too big and that's why we put this right here at max risk this is actually a thousand dollars so you can see we're only going in with size of three which is not very much if we go over here top right femex size of three is leverage must be crazy here let's do like 5x leverage size of three 70 dollars worth cost 14 dollars now like if my bot ever for some reason just went crazy on me and got into a position over a thousand dollars it would just close the position because it's like okay that's the max i want like if everything fails and everything goes crazy which it shouldn't 
we're gonna build it and it never has, but I like to put risk parameters in there. So if it ever gets too big, bigger than max risk of $1,000, then just close. And when I get back to the computer, I'll look into it. So we have the, our two kill switches, which we do need. We also need to get our open positions. Let's go ahead and bring in open positions and bid and ask. So I'll go through these really quickly. You can see open positions. It just pulls my open positions. I'm gonna need to figure out what my data frame positions index is. Let's do a to do figure out index position. So this gets our open position and we need it for our kill switch. Let's make sure that this fixed the little error in the kill switch. Good, good. I'm gonna put that to do up here. To do one, make sure index positions throughout are good. Each exchange has a different index position for each token. And we're using UBTC, which is BTC, backed by the dollar. And essentially, it's a super important part, so we're gonna have to do that. Okay, we get the bid and the ask. This is a bid and that ask function. Looks good to me. Active orders, we wanna see if there's any active orders. Like I said, I've written so much of this before. We're just getting through this part because this sets everything up. Active orders and active orders too I have over here. Okay, well, we'll bring both those in. I'll explain them. Let's put it right here. So active orders essentially just gets all of our active orders. Like if we have any orders that are active sitting on the books. Not using this for now, but don't want to delete. I mentioned this earlier for this one, this other active orders. It looks like I made two active orders, but yeah. So we have two active orders in there. Obviously don't need to, but this is going to get all of our active orders. We're going to bring in the average true range and those are pretty simple formulas. You can see those here. TR, ATR. These are just good because it will help determine, you know, if it's a good time to be market making or not. This isn't like the true sense of market making where they're always on the bid and ask, or always buying and selling. I'm not well versed enough yet to do that, but this is my sense of market making where it's like, I don't really care about the, the price long term. Uh, we're just looking for a steady time to buy and sell. When it's steady, then we can probably do pretty well. And I've tested this before, so it does decently well. Of course, there's always tweaking to be done. And I always recommend do not just run my bots, but learn from me, you know? Most people aren't gonna share this information on YouTube, so learn from me. And then build your own, build your own stuff, for sure, before you run it live. Cause that's just, I don't need to tell you that. <laughs> I think you know. Anyways, go ahead, make two new functions. No trade ATR. So if the trade ATR is bigger than our no trade ATR, then we won't trade. Close that up. Make this data frame with the ATR. Perfect, perfect. By the way, if you have any questions, please do let me know. Now let's dive into the bot. So let's go ahead and call this the bot part. This is where we're gonna do more custom work. A lot of that stuff was just like stuff I needed to get in in order to do this. So let's set def, okay, what do we need now? First thing we need to do, we need to check the size kill. Remember the size kill closes position if ever over max position or whatever I called it up here. I don't remember what I called it, but close these up so we can get around a little quicker. Max true range, max risk. So it closes position if it ever gets over the max risk. I set at $1,000. Like I said earlier, these trades are only gonna be like $70 worth. But the reason I have that, the first thing it does is because we're gonna loop through this every 20 seconds. And if it ever sees my max open position over $1,000, that can be increased or decreased, whatever. But if it ever sees over that number, it's like, get me out of the market because something's gone wrong. You know, I don't wanna risk more than that on one trade. I'd rather have 10,000 trades at $500, you know? What else do we need to do here? Let's bring in the date and time. Let's go ahead and just paste this in here. So now we have the date and time, turns into a string and also computer time. We need to make a DF. Let's call it DF2 though. DF2 equals pd.dataframe. So this data frame is gonna store our trades. And the reason we're gonna do that is because I wanna build an inner rule so it doesn't over trade. So it's gonna look at, hey, like how often has this been traded? Did it trade in the last like 20 minutes or whatever? If it did, okay, well, let's chill because we don't want to over trade. As I mentioned, you know, like market make true sense. There's all types of different strategies for market making. This is my best interpretation that I've been able to execute now. So it doesn't trade like 52 million times per day on 89,000 assets. Like some market makers do. I was listening to a podcast the other day. I think it was chat with traders. Shout out to them. Uh, but somebody said they trade like a million times per day. 
And I'm like, holy smokes, that's crazy. So now the DF2, we'll run this one. Let's say this is gonna be a DF2 as well, but this is gonna be a pd.read CSV. And then I don't know what the file is yet, but we'll figure that out here in a second. Well, I guess I could figure it. Mm, no, we'll do that. That's another to do on 373. Get the DF2 file name and implement it. The reason I can't get the file name yet is because I don't have the file name. We haven't saved it yet, and we'll do that later. Right now, we're just checking our size, making sure our size is never over our risk, and then making a data frame two that stores our trades marked out df2 for now that we'll read in and we'll mark this one out later our other trades and then this one we actually want to use a try block let's go ahead and just pull this in like i said I, i've been working on this market maker for a long time so if you appreciate me sharing this all with you please do tap the like button and if you want all the code just instantly just jump into the boot camp there's a link for that below but essentially i put this in a try block because it sometimes fails in case like there's not a last trade the close time you can see here we're just looking at the last close time and I can explain it right here. Looking at when the last close was and making sure we don't over trade. So that's the synopsis of that. Put some notes in here for myself. This is not a good fix, but it works. All right, so what else do we need to do? We need to get the bid and ask. So let's say bid ask equals get bid ask. Remember, we have a function above that gets the bid and ask. So we just pull it in and then ask equals bid ask zero. And then the bid equals bid ask one, I believe. We'll check that right now. So let's go to the bid ask function up here. And yet the ask is zero and the one is bid. Okay, so we have the bid ask now. We obviously need to get our data, but I don't think we're gonna get that yet. Let's get our open positions and our active orders. Open positions equals open positions. And then active orders, well, it's this one. We'll grab the two because that's the most updated one. Active orders two equals. This is gonna give us a bunch of information here. So we're gonna print just for some feedback and it's gonna tell us like, are we in a open position? This is stuff it's gonna tell us. Stop loss, close bull, need stop loss, need close order, already limit order. So just a bunch of information that's gonna be helpful. We'll see how it works later. We then want to set all of the above active order, all that information to variables. So that's pretty easy to do, just like that. We're just taking all this information that we pulled from active orders, and you can see this is the order of it. We just set it up right there, different index positions. And then we want to get our data and then put it in a data frame. So let's just pull that in. Bars equals CMAX dot fetch open hope, high low close, volume, limit of bars. You can see we just set up the columns that's timestamp open high low close and then change the timestamp to the correct format and then frame data equals that. Now let's get the low and the high out of our data frame, which is right here, this data frame. We want to get the high and the low. So low equals df low dot min and then high equals df high because right it's the, the highest and then we want the maximum of the highest. And then low to high equals high minus low. And then the average equals high plus low and then divided by two. Now, the things we wanna know about this, we'll just print out. So print the low is this, the high is this, the low to high is that, the average price is this, and the max low to high is this. Remember the max low to high, we set up top. Like, okay, this is the max range we wanna be trading in. So if the max low to high is more than 800, then we we'll probably won't trade. Okay, makes sense. Next thing we want to do, we want to say if low to high is bigger than max low to high. If that's the case, then we want to set no trading to true and print just indicator for us, no trading cause low to high. So that's just letting us know. And then just in case we're in a trade, we want to get out of it. So that's why we call the kill switch. So the kill switch kills us, takes us out of every trade. Kind of like this one, as you can see down here in the bottom right, we hit our max PL. So we hit a negative eight PL, which I'm happy to finally show you some losing trades. But when this happens, it calls our kill switch and it tries to get us out of the position. And it just gracefully tries to get us out, meaning it's gonna sit on the bid or the ask. If that doesn't happen, then we wanna say no trading equals false, right? Because we're fine. 
and then print no trading is false. Now we want to see if there in the past there's been no trading in the last some bars. So let's say DF low. Let's make it a list. And then last 17, this will be last 17 bars, equals DF to list minus 17. And then we're gonna build out this little loopity loop, and it's gonna say for num in last 17, if low is equal or greater than number, then we wanna say no trading equals true. Print F, the low is bigger than any of the last n bars. So no trading equals true low. Low would equal the low and num equals no. All right, so LF high is num. No trading equals true. Print F the I is less than any of the last and bars. So no trading equals true. Put the high in there and num in there as well. Perfect. So we just want one more else here and say print F no trading wasn't triggered by the last 17 bars, meaning we are not making higher highs or lower lows. Low, high, no. High, low, boom. All right, let's keep it moving then. Let me know if you have any questions to this point. I know I'm flying through this, but I think this is actually probably a pretty good place to stop. Let's say we're gonna pause here. Pause here. We're gonna keep working on this market maker. I, I've had some feedback that the videos get a little too long. It's hard to pay attention for this long and I get it. So I'm gonna make this a second part of this video here uh, if you want it. So if you want the second part of this video where we continue to build the market maker, just let me know below. Comment something creative to let me know you want part two because I'm stopping it here. Usually I, I could go for five hours and build the whole thing, but you know, I'm doing it for you. I wanna, I wanna make sure this video isn't too long, too intimidating. If you appreciate me sharing all this code with you, please do tap that like button. If you want all this code finished and just cut to the code part and get a step-by-step -step walkthrough of exactly how to be a great algo trader, then definitely join the bootcamp. There's a link for that below. But hey, if you're not quite ready for that, don't worry about it. I've got more videos here that I can show you on YouTube and I'll put that video up uh, on the screen right now and we can keep on jamming. So either see you in that video or most likely I'll just see you in the bootcamp. Talk to you soon.